<laughs> I thought there was something else. Release the ready. Hey guys, we're here in the studio and uh, we just wanted to come and give you a shout out and let you know. I know many people saw the announcement uh, probably on social media and uh, the leaders did a great job keeping it a secret. Oh yes, <laughs> it was so tough to keep it a secret. It but was, we did it. they did well. And uh, we actually had our 10th anniversary celebration um, last Sunday. And uh, we made the announcement that uh, we are moving forward in this next 10 years. Uh, and the new name of the church is? Alive. Alive. We are alive. <laughs> yes, uh, in every season when uh, new things are uh, happening and God is doing a new things, there's always a new word to represent this new season. So I love, love, love the word alive. And it truly reflects who we are and what God is calling us to do in this territory. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was preaching on Sunday and I kept saying we are alive and getting the church to to repeat we are alive. And I was teaching out of Romans and how um, the Bible says that the same power that raised Christ from the dead mm -hmm. is brought us alive. I love mm -hmm. the message translation. And, and that, that that life is working in us to bring transformation uh, through us, and that life is working uh, through us to bring transformation to our world, that we're touching heaven, we're touching yes. earth. And uh, then at the end, I said, we are alive. And then we, we talked about it, and I could just see it, the surprise in the crowd, and everyone was like, what, what, What's, what just happened? Mm -hmm. um, but it's nothing really new. I think it's like you said, it's a word really to describe who we are and um, what God has called us to do, our distinctive. Every church has a distinctive. Why a new church in Orange County as we started 10 years ago? There's lots of churches um, because God's given us a mandate and God's given us a, a, a purpose. Yes, and that mandate is very much uh, related to the person of the Holy Spirit because um, I think about 10 years when we came to Orange County, we realized that the Holy Spirit is very much restricted. There's not a lot of movement here and a lot of churches are not welcoming of the Holy Spirit. And we felt the call uh, by God to really once again bring the church back into alignment to submit to the Holy Spirit as the master of the church and not the mascot. So I think the Holy Spirit is the representation of that Zoe life of God. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow the rivers of living water, uh, uh, referring to the person of the Holy Spirit. So I think that uh, is so apt because we're, ca we're called here to reintroduce the Holy Spirit to the people of God and from there establish the kingdom. And so the people of God, the evidence that the people of God are uh, embracing the life of the Holy Spirit is that they come alive. They come alive in their passion for Christ. They come alive in their love for the body of Christ. They come alive uh, to activate their gifting so that they can appropriately build the kingdom of God where the king will be exalted. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, this year we started out with a time of prayer and fasting and uh, had 21 days of prayer and fasting. And in that, we were just kind of going deeper and, okay, God, as we come into um, this new year, and every year we, we want to seek God for the year, but also there was a, a, a also a greater weight and seriousness, I felt, because mm -hmm. not only are we coming into a new year, we're coming into 10 years uh, as a church. Okay. And so um, really started going back, God, who are we? Um, what is our distinctive? Who has God really called us to be as a church? And mm -hmm. um, what defines that? Are we still City Harvest Church? Yes, we are. We're still all about the harvest. Um, but we're much more than just wanting to just reach the city or or grow and, and have numbers. I mean, we're in a place where there's many mega churches out there and the harvest is part of that. But there was uh, three words that really came up and it was reach, equip, and release. And so as we started going and praying, mm -hmm. um, the thing that God really put in our heart is that we want to, to re uh, reach the world, which speaks of reaching our city, reaching, of course, the Great Commission, and then also equip the willing. Because not everyone's wanting, willing to be equipped. Not everyone's willing and wanting to really be trained and discipled and, and come into purpose. Some people, they just want to go to church and they don't want anyone involved in their lives and that's where they're at. But we're probably not the right church for those people. So we want, want to begin to, to come into those that are willing and begin to equip the willing and then what? Release the ready. As we're trained and equipped, uh, you know, Ephesians 4 says a five-fold ministry, the apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, equips 
the saints to do the work mm. of the ministry. Sometimes we get it backwards in the church and we're hiring staff and the church staff do all the, the ministry, but we're, we're not that kind of church. We're a church where we want to minimize our staff, minimize salaries, mm. and uh, raise up volunteer leaders, raise up lay leaders, raise up members where every member is a minister so that we can begin to release right. them into their ministries. Yeah, and uh, that reminded me of a couple of years ago when uh, I think Pastor Mike Connell was the one who came, and uh, when he was uh, preaching in church and he gave us a word, remember he said that I see this word hub, mm. that God has called uh, City Harvest during that time of City Harvest to be a hub where we will train and equip the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teacher, and the pastors. Uh, to raise them up and equip the body of Christ. And he see us as a center to train uh, all these people that will come in uh, and train them up in the fivefold ministry. So I think that it, it is uh, so relevant, these three words, and so on point, it speaks to us about who we are called to be. We are really called to be people who will equip the willing and to release, release the, the ready. <laughs> I thought there was something else. Release the ready. Uh, those that, Equip the willing. Yeah. Release the ready. Yeah. And the first part about reaching the world, right? God says that, ask me and I shall give you the nations yeah. for your inheritance. And I believe that that really is our calling uh, for a life church. Yeah. And uh, so it's moving forward from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Um, we thank God for the journey and all we've learned, those that have been part into us. And we don't put that aside, um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a focus. And I think when we declare, like you said, the power of a word, um, we are alive. We, we're a live church. And just even, um, you know, inviting people to come, hey, come to a live. You know, what? What's that? You know, and uh, uh, through our branding, through it, it's, it's even a, a more powerful evangelistic tool. I love the team. And we came up with the new branding, the new logo, um, you know, which which uh, shows uh, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's three in the you know waves in the in the uh, in the A that mm -hmm. is there you know. But also uh, it's also about um, bringing people in. It's about equipping them. It's about releasing them. And so it's a talking point. Um, I love the life to it. And uh, it's just, um, you know, like a new wineskin, I would say, for yes. us as a church. So we're so excited uh, about the future. And we're going to continue to build. We're building in the spirit. But we're also a, a church. We're strong in the word. We're strong in the spirit. We're, we're not, we're not uh, one of those churches that's just out there in the ozone somewhere and has no foundation. You know, we're still very strong in the word, but we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the life right. giver to the church. Um, Jesus told the disciples to wait until they received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to get back to the, the the baptism of the Holy Spirit and believing in the gifts and believing in the operations of the Holy Spirit because that's what's going to change our world. It's not philosophy. It, it's not uh, just theology, even though we need to have a proper understanding of the Word of God. But everybody, every religion has their philosophy. What's the difference? Paul said, my, my teaching were not just with it, persuasive words of human wisdom or eloquence. And thank God for those that can communicate the word, we need to do that. But he said that that I came with power and with demonstration that your faith would not be in a man and just his teaching, but your faith would be in the power of God. And so uh, that's really what we want to see. People coming in, encountering God, coming in, getting touched in the presence of God. We build a strong atmosphere, getting people excited, getting people set free, getting people empowered, uh, getting people filled. And so out of that overflow, we're able to reach our world for Jesus. And I can't agree more that uh, before Christ comes back, the church must be restored. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can bridge the gap between men and women. Only the Holy Spirit can remove prejudices between language group, culture group, between people of different colors and different tongues. I believe that we need to cry out to heaven. We need to cry out to God to once again pour out the latter rain. The Bible says the former rain and the latter rain will come to Together, and then we will see great mighty revival, fire. Uh, people will come alive. The body of Christ will come alive. And it is so important for us to frame this new season with a new word. Yeah. It's just like um, Saul. God called him and then God saved him and turned his name to Paul. Yeah. Uh, Abraham, uh, God changed his name to Abraham. Jacob, God began to declare a new season in his life and rename him 
Israel. So it's important that we embrace this name. And, and many people, when they heard this name, they were so excited. It resonated with them yeah. because the time is now and the time is here. The body of Christ needs to arise, be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, that out of our lips will come forth the words from heaven. Out of our hands will come forth the power of God. Wherever we go, the Bible says that He shall give it to us wherever our feet shall tread. There you go. So there you have it. Just for a nutshell for us, we just want to come and kind of give a shout out and share our hearts with you. And uh, I think we've always been uh, wanting to reach the world. I think we've always been equipping the willing. But I really feel that that third part of releasing the ready is going to come. And God's been to launch mm -hmm. us uh, into the nations again. He gave us a word last year. Uh, we're going to see community impact here in, in Elisa Viejo in Orange County, where God's put us um, and, and believe God for expansion to come and church planning and missions. And uh, it's going to be great as we come, we come together and get equipped yes. in the word and the spirit. The best is yet to come, and we're going to change our world for Jesus. The world needs a living Jesus. The world needs the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's what a live church is all about. Come alive.